All the next day, he sat on the prince's shoulder and told him stories of what he had seen in strange lands. He told him of the rat ibises who stand in long rows on the banks of the Nile and catch goldfish in their bees, of the sphinx who is as old as the world itself and lives in the desert and knows everything, of the merchants who walk slowly by the side of them camels and carry amber bees in their hands, of the king of the mountains of the moon who is as black as empathy and worships a large crystal, of the great green snake that lives in a palm tree and has twenty places to feed in with honey cakes, and of the pygmies who sail over a big lake on large flat leaves, and are always at war with the butterflies. Dear little swallow, said the prince, you tell me of marvelous things, but more marvelous thing than anything is the suffering of man and of woman. There is no mystery so great as misery. Fly over my city, little swallow, and tell me what you see there. So the swallow flew over the great city and saw the rich making merry in their beautiful houses while the beggars were sitting at the gates. He flew into dark lands and saw the white faces of starving children looking out listlessly at the black streets. Under the archway of a bridge, Two little boys were lying in one another's arms to try and keep themselves warm. How hungry we are, they said. You must not lie here, shouted the watchman, and they wandered out into the rain. Then he flew back and told the prince what he had seen. I'm covered with fine gold, said the prince. You must take it off, leaf by leaf, and give it to my poor. The living always think that gold can make them happy. Leaf after leaf of the fine gold, the swallow picked it off, till the happy prince looked quite dull and grey. Leaf after leaf of the fine gold he brought to the poor, and the children's faces grew rosa, and they laughed and played games in the street. We have black now, they cried. Then the snow came, and after the snow came the frost, the streets, though as if they were made of silver. They were so bright and glistening. Long icicles like crystal daggers hang down from the eaves of the houses. Everybody went about in furs, and the little boys wore scarlet caps and skating on the ice. The poor little swallow grew colder and colder, but he would not leave the prince. He loved him too well. He packed up crops outside the beggar's door when the beggar was not looking and tried to keep himself warm by flapping his wings. But at last, he knew that he was going to die he had just enough strength to fly up to the prince's shoulder once more. Goodbye, dear prince, he muttered. Will you let me kiss your hand? 
I'm glad that you are going to eat at last, la little swallow," said the prince. "You have stayed too long here. You must kiss me on the lips, for I love you." It is not to Egypt that I'm going," said the swallow. "I'm going to the house of death. Death is the blood of the lips, is he not?" And he kissed the happy prince on the lips, and fell down, dead at his feet. At that moment. A curious crack shot inside the statue, as if something had broken. The fact is that the Latin heart has led right in two. It certainly was a dreadfully hard frost. Early the next morning, the mayor was walking in the square below, in company with the town councillors, as they passed the column. He looked up at the statue. "Dear me, how shabby the happy prince looks!" he said. "How shabby indeed!" cried the town councillors, who always agreed with the mayor, and they went up to look at. The ruby has fallen out of his sword; his eyes are gone. And he is golden no longer," said the mayor. "In fact, he is little better than a beggar." <laughs> "Little better than a beggar," said the town councillors. "And here is actually a dead bird at his feet," continued the mayor. "We must really issue a proclamation that birds." Are not to be allowed to die here. And the town clerk made a note of the suggestion. So they pulled down the statue of the happy prince. As he is no longer beautiful, he is no longer useful," said the arts professor at the university. Then. They mailed the statue in the Verdes, and the mayor held a meeting of the corporation to decide what was to be done with the medal. We must have another statue, of course, he said, and it shall be a statue of myself. Of myself, said each of the town councillors, and they quarrelled. When the last heard of them, they were calling still. What a strange thing," said the the overseer of the workmen at the foundry. "This broken lead heart will not melt in the furnace. We must throw it away, so they throw it on the dead heap." Well, the dead swallow was also lying. Bring me the two most precious things in the city," said God to one of His angels, and the angel brought him the Latin heart and the dead bird. You have rightly chosen," said God. For in my garden of paradise, this little bird shall sing for evermore, and in my city of gold, the happy prince shall praise me.